Eating processed food for every meal isn't healthy for people or for dogs. We all know that, and kibble is subject to multiple rounds of high heat processing, making it an ultra-processed food. The farmer's dog is real, fresh, healthy food with whole meat and veggies gently cooked in human-grade kitchens to preserve their nutritional value. My dog, Barnaby, loves the farmer's dogs. When he sees me pulling one of those packets out, he comes running. It's personalized, vet-developed, and it has recipes for as little as $2 a day. Meals arrive in pre-portion, ready-to-serve packs, and they're conveniently delivered on whatever schedule works for me. Get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash happier. That's 50% off your first box at thefarmersdog.com slash happier. Hello and welcome to Happier, a podcast where we talk about ideas and strategies and research and suggestions about how to make our lives happier. This week, we'll talk about why we might choose to focus on the textures in our life. And we will also share listeners' suggestions for hashtag right24 and 24 or the right way. There is no wrong way, but there is a right way. I'm Gretchen Rubin, a writer who studies happiness, good habits, the five senses, human nature. I am here in my little home office in New York City, and joining me today from Los Angeles is my sister, Elizabeth Kraft. And Elizabeth, one thing I always love to do with you is to talk about the amazing texture of Winstead's ice. That's me, Elizabeth Kraft, a TV writer and producer living in L.A. And yes, Scratch, we are going to be chomping on some of that ice soon because we are going to be in Kansas City together. I cannot wait. They have the best ice in the world at Winstead's. But before we jump in, we have a few updates. One coming from a listener who was responding to episode 472 suggestion about having a tough conversation while walking. Yeah, this comes from Mindy. She says... I need to comment on how much I loved your idea to have hard talks when walking. Yes, my daughter has been going through a lot this past year and has not been successful in therapy groups or one-on-one, -on -one, but when she is out on a walk with my mom or myself, she always starts talking. She even touches on harder things to talk about that she will not address at other times. It is such a great way to connect, reduce stress, and get it all out. My 16-year-old daughter also begins to talk more when we are driving home from her climbing practice when we are side by side. I find it so enjoyable that we can have this time together when it is most comfortable for my girls. Yeah, great examples of how walking can really change the atmosphere of a conversation in a productive way. Yes. Now, and Elizabeth, I just have to ask because we talked about No Spend February and you said that one thing that surprised you was that by not spending, you thought you were sort of actually getting the pent up desire to actually mm -hmm. buy, not just browse, which is something that you often do, which is you browse, but you thought, okay, this is counterintuitively making me want to buy more. But at that point, you hadn't actually bought more. So I'm just curious have you bought more? Well, Gretch, I haven't gone and bought a lot of clothes, which is what I was really feeling like buying uh -huh. during that time. Okay. But I did go to an actual bookstore and I bought some books. Okay. And a little bit of a book splurge. And I think that was part of my itch to shop. Okay. And to buy. Interesting. So I would say better than going out and buying a bunch of clothes, uh -huh. definitely, is to buy a few books. So you think you did have that impact? impulse, but it you channeled it in a different way. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Well, this week, the Try This at Home suggestion is to focus on the textures of our everyday lives. So, Gretch, talk about this, because this was big in Life in Five Senses. In my book, Life in Five Senses, I wrote a lot about, as you would think, about all five senses. I did pick the five kindergarten senses, you might say. There are like 33 mm -hmm. or 35 senses that scientists now identify, but I talked about the big five. And one of the things that really surprised me as I was writing Life in Five Senses is actually how touch-focused I am. You would think, oh, of course, if something really is important to you or really matters to you, of course you'd know it. But I had no idea until I really focused my attention on it how much the texture of things 
matter to me. I just literally did not know what seems to be a very basic fact about myself. So I think it's a great thing to spend a little time thinking about. Well, and it's one of those aspects of life that can be easy to tune out. I mean, you can go through your whole day and not think about the texture of anything that you're touching. Yeah, well, I mean, and then I have my what's your most neglected sense quiz. And one of the things that I talk about is with a neglected sense, we often focus more on the downsides of a sense, like what bothers us or annoys us or what we're trying to avoid rather than really thinking about what we enjoy. So when we notice things that we enjoy, we can get more pleasures from ordinary life. Like you and me talking about Winstead's ice. Our mother was like, I've never noticed Winstead's ice. And we're thinking to us, this gives us such satisfaction every time we go. So when you notice that you enjoy more. Also, when you notice the things that bother you, you can perhaps make your surroundings more pleasant. You can't do this with everything, but maybe you're sort of think, oh, you know, I really, you know, that handle is sticky. If I just took a minute and got a washcloth and washed it off, it wouldn't Mm. be sticky anymore. So if we notice, consciously notice the things that bother us, we can maybe fix them. And also when we recognize that other people have different preferences from us, I think it can allow us to show more compassion to other people and also to ourselves. So you could say like, well, other people do not think that this chair is uncomfortably scratchy, but to me, it's really uncomfortable and I don't want to buy this chair. And so it's not that one person's right and one person's wrong. It's just that I really don't like scratchy things. And to me, the texture of this chair feels scratchy. So I don't, I think we should pick a different chair. Well, that Gretchen, I know, is what made you um, come up with your thing of closing your eyes in a dressing room to make sure that you like the way something feels. Yeah. Because sometimes sight often trumps the other senses. This is why tomatoes are bred for the way they look, not for the way they taste, or flowers are bred for the way they look and not so much for the way they smell. Because in the end, for most of us, sight will trump. And so, yeah, I will close my eyes to make sure that I I had this scratchy pair of pants that I loved. They were this beautiful color. I loved the way they looked. And I got them home from the store and they were so incredibly scratchy. They like left marks on my skin. I'm like, were these supposed to be lined? And I got like a bad one off the factory or something. It was just inexplicable to me. But so, yes, now I shut my eyes so that I get, I can tune into the way that something feels. Gretch, I remember in the Happiness Project, you talked about how you can add more of feeling good or work on less of feeling bad. And that definitely applies here. Right. Yeah. No, it, it's very literal here, right? Because you want to think about feeling good, feeling bad, feeling right in an atmosphere of growth. That's sort of how to think about a happy life. And so here it's like, literally, is this thing pleasant or is this thing unpleasant? Can you have more of it or less of it? Well, and I mentioned the Neglected Sense Quiz, which if people want to take it, it's at GretchenRubin.com slash quiz or HappierCast.com slash quiz. And it tells you you're most neglected and most appreciated. And touch is right in the middle of both. It's kind of scores in the middle. But Liz, let's talk about Mm. touch. What are some textures that you particularly enjoy or don't enjoy? Well, I love fake fur Throw blankets, Scratch. Oh, yeah. Just give me a faux fur, really a faux fur anything. Yes. I just love running my hand over it. I could do that all day. And I'll get a faux fur blanket and put it over me and just rub my hand on it. I did not know that about you, but I will say this. I remember from like nine or 10 years ago, I was in Bloomingdale's buying a wedding present or something, and there was a faux chinchilla throw that was so soft. I was just running my hands over and over it. And it's one of the few things in my life that I thought, (laughs) I really wish I had made that impulse purchase because I'm still thinking about it. Ah. If I could go in and get it, I would send it to you right this second because it would just blow your mind. It was the most (laughs) delightful texture. What else? Well, if you see it again, (laughs) pounce. If I feel it, yes. I love the texture of my dog, Daisy. Uh So we have two corgis, Nacho and Daisy, but Daisy's fur is just much softer than Nacho's, and I love feeling her fur. I think that's probably one of the reasons I love having dogs so much is because I love just feeling her fur. It's it's very comforting and soft and wonderful. Yeah, no, it's so true. What do you like? Well, one thing I've talked about, and I'm not even sure if I like it, but I'm very intrigued by it. It's the sunscreen that I use for my face. It's from Super Goop. It's called Mm. Unseen Sunscreen. And I got it because sometimes sunscreen gives a cast to your face. And I I realized, I thought it was showing up if I was like taking pictures of myself or videos. And so I thought, okay, I'll get this because the theory is it's unseen. But it has a very unusual, slippery 
texture. I bet some people love it and some people mm. really do not love it. I bet it's polarizing, but it's intriguing. I'm always very intrigued. And then also, Alyssa, so we have our AirPod case where like somebody can get an AirPod case that has the Happier logo on it. So of course I have one and I gave you one for Christmas. Yes. And you know, I like that texture. It's sort of that rubbery, it's hard, but it has a little bit of give. There's something about that texture that I often find myself just pulling it out of my pocket and rubbing the case between my fingers. I like that texture. Yeah, I like that texture too. Rich, we both like silky textures. Well, and this is what's funny is I've discovered that this is controversial. I mean, you as long as I've, I I can remember you being a child and talking about how much you like silky textures. Yes. I used to think that if I could just have silk sheets, you know, that would be the ultimate luxury in life. I think I might have even mentioned that on the podcast. You gave me a silk pillowcase for Christmas one year because you knew my desire for silk uh, bed linens. Yeah. But it's funny because a lot of people really don't like that. I was surprised because I thought it was like silk and velvet. Everybody loves them. But I don't know about velvet yeah. if velvet is so controversial. Let me do, let the us universe. know, listeners, if you have strong feelings about velvet. But many people are really turned off by anything silky or slippery, which is very surprising. But listen, it's funny. It's like now whenever, and I think there was sort of that silk edging to your beloved childhood blankie. And so you also liked it there. Yeah. The textures of childhood. Yeah. And Gretchen, speaking of that, I was thinking about how textures, just like taste and smell, can take you back to a memory. Yes. Like, I can be right back in our grandparents' guest room if I think about the texture of the walls. They had a rough, these rough walls. Sandy. And... Sandy, yes. And I can be right back in there in a moment if I just think about that texture. Absolutely. I remember running my knuckles across it when I was lying in bed. Absolutely. And that's one of the superpowers of the senses. And I loved writing about this in Life in Five Senses is how much all of them can carry us back. Like we think of the, about the fact that like music takes us back or a food can take us back, but even something like a texture. Or remember how there was that lava soap. Our grandfather was an engineer for the Union Pacific Railroad. And so he had that textured soap. It had sand in it because he had like very grimy hands. And I, I will always associate that with him. Oh, and Elizabeth, you know, speaking of old fashioned, yes. one thing that you and I both have, and this is strange, we didn't talk about this Ahead of time, we just sort of both had the same impulses. We both have old-fashioned, what do you, what would you call them? Like physical phones as sort of decorative yeah, objects like a, in our homes. Yes, I have a rotary phone, a yellow rotary phone that I took from grandma and grandpa's house, actually. And yeah, I love the feel of the receiver. I love touching it and just picking it up and touching the cord. And I have an old-fashioned one that we sort of inherited in an odd way. And there's just something about the heaviness of it and just the weight in your hand. They're just interesting. And I think it's because of their textures and their weights and just the feel of it is something that's, that's very different. And so anyway, I think just tuning into texture, we can have more of feeling good. We can have less of feeling bad. We can bring us back to memories. It could just help us to tune into our environment. You know, I think a lot of people, they want to appreciate the moment. They want to feel more present. And I think, you know, a lot of times it's like, okay, what am I smelling? What am I hearing? And just thinking, like, well, what are the textures of the things around me? It's just surprising. I, I, I was just astonished to realize how sensitive to touch and texture I am. I had no idea um, until I wrote that book. Mm -hmm. Well, let us know if you do try this at home and how focusing on textures works for you. What do you like? What do you don't like? How do you feel about silk? How do you feel about velvet? What textures remind you of your childhood? Let us know all things touch on Instagram threads, TikTok, Facebook. You can email us at podcast at GretchenRubin.com. Or as always, you can go to the show notes. This is happiercast.com slash 476 for everything related to this episode. Coming up, we have a work from home happiness hack, but first this break. We all know that our life and our health can be improved when we eat nourishing, healthy meals, but it can be hard to maintain. With SunBasket Meal Kits, it's easy because they take care of the details. SunBasket offers 18 chef-crafted, dietitian approved recipes each week with options like Mediterranean, carb-conscious, vegetarian, and keto-friendly. The recipes are quick and easy to follow, and you can enjoy a meal full of organic produce and clean ingredients that's ready in 30 minutes or less. 
Try mouth-watering sun basket dishes like salmon burgers with lemon dill mayo and seared squash or steaks with chimichurri and harissa roasted sweet potatoes. Gretch, my son is a picky eater like many kids, but he yeah. loves all the dishes from Sun Basket. Go to sunbasket.com forward slash happier today to get $45 off your first order. That's sunbasket.com forward slash happier to get $45 off your first box plus free shipping. Hey, it's Mel Robbins, and I've got a new podcast. Here's why you're going to love listening to it. It's about life and the simple things you can do to create a better one. I'll be sharing my funny stories and proven tools that have helped millions of people change their lives. Every episode will move you emotionally, move you to think differently, or move you into action. Listen to the Mel Robbins podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts. Okay, Gretch, we're back with this week's happiness hack. You could use this for anything, but for me, it seems great for a Zoom meeting. Yes. Okay. So you know how a lot of times if you're doing a Zoom thing on your laptop, it's hard to get it high enough so that the camera is at eye level, which is what everybody says. If you want it to be flattering, if you want people to feel like you're really connecting with them, you want to have your camera high enough. But for most people, if they put it on the surface of their desk or the table or whatever, it's low. And it's not a good look for any of us. And we've all been on the other side of that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's a pain to run around your house or wherever you are and because uh, it actually takes quite a bit to get it high enough. But one thing you can do is yoga blocks. A yoga block is something that a lot of people have lying around. They are very light, so they're easy to run and get. Because I was getting like giant stacks of like dictionaries and things like that, which are yeah. very heavy and cumbersome. Yoga block, you can get one, you can get two, you use one, and then you can adjust it with a couple books. It's just, it's very easy. It's a great way to repurpose something if you've got it. Maybe you're not doing that much yoga. So now yeah. it's uh, now it's like has a totally different way to use it. And it really improves appearance, I think. Yes. And I love that, again, you could use two next to each other and they're uniform in size. Yes. Because I always have these teetering stacks yes. of books. And then I, you know, it's a whole to do every time. It's a whole thing. So we're all looking for these easy ways to make remote work easier. And uh, I think that's a very easy way. Yeah. And thinking of ingenious solutions to everyday challenges, Elizabeth, we have a lot of ideas from listeners about the right way. These are listeners who have come up with interesting ways to join the hashtag right 24 in 24 challenge. Yes, and we should remind listeners it is never too yes. late to join. You can join the challenge today. It doesn't yes. have to have been January 1st. Yes. And even if you're not part of the challenge, these are just good ideas in general. Yeah. Yeah. This comes from Megan. She says, for my Write 24 and 24 challenge, I've decided to write at least two daily complimentary or encouraging comments or reviews for things I have consumed. It can be commenting on a recipe I saw on Instagram, writing a book review on Goodreads, connecting with those doing the Yoga with Adrian journey on YouTube, one of my 24 for 24 that I just completed, or thanking a podcaster, etc. There is so much negativity online, and I hope to spread positive energy. Coincidentally, my word for the year is energy. Well, this is wonderful. And we talk about this all the time. It really does matter. These things really do matter. So it's a, it's a really wonderful thing to do. It makes you feel good. It makes somebody else feel good. It's positive energy. Yes. Great idea. Yes. Christine wrote, I've been working on an essay for a while and recently started setting a timer for 24 minutes. While some days it's all I can do to write for that amount of time, most often I've been finding myself in the creative flow and writing well past the allotted time. For example, today I wrote for 40 minutes. I'm so pleased each time my timer goes off and I reset it. So that's the thing. You often say this, Elizabeth. If you do a little bit, you often can do more, but you have to start out by doing that little bit. Yes. Starting is the hardest. Yeah. Meg said, I purchased a Muse machine as a Christmas present for myself this past year, but wasn't sure how I was going to incorporate it into my life. I just loved the idea of it. 
After hearing how you were going to use the Muse machine each week for guidance, I thought I would try to use it myself for inspiration or prompts for my Write 24 and 24. My goal is to write two to four minutes a day in a one-sentence journal. Today, needing inspiration, I pulled the card Big Ending, and all of a sudden I had it. We have had a big ending to the month of January. Just yesterday, my 17-year-old son made it through military entrance processing and took the oath to enter the Marine Corps. I had the inspiration inspiration for my one sentence journal entry. This also ties into my one word theme this year, which is transformation, not only for myself, but also our family and our son, a senior in high school about to set off on his own journey. Well, this is so fun. I'm so happy to hear that the Muse machine is, that's exactly how it's supposed to work. So I'm so happy to hear that. (laughs) I'll post a link in the show notes if anybody wants to check out the Muse machine. That is so fun. And congratulations to your son. Yes. Taylor writes, as a 22 year old who will graduate from college soon, I'm really overwhelmed with decisions. What city do I want to live in? What kind of job should I try to get? Should I apply to business school? Every decision seems dependent on every other decision, and my thoughts just circled and circled. Now that I'm writing down my thoughts in no particular order for 24 minutes a day, I feel like I'm starting to get a little clarity. Well, that's something a lot of people say is that writing helps people sort through their thoughts. So it's great that that's useful. Lauren says, I wanted to share how I have embraced the Write 24 and 24 challenge. I have been keeping a one line a day, a five-year journal for 14 years, and have found it is the best way for me to remember my daily life. I truly enjoy reading back entries. I can remember the places, the experiences, the emotions as if it were yesterday. It happens to also be very useful when I need to remember the name of a place or when an event happened. For example, on my U.S. citizenship application, I had to list every time I had left the country in the past five years with dates and locations. Let me tell you, I was grateful for my little journals then. At the end of December, I bought a new journal, and this one we use as a family diary to chronicle our year. Every night, we go around the dinner table and write down the highlight of our day. It has been such a fun way to connect, and it will be a keepsake I'll treasure forever. Highlights range from the silliest, when mom face-planted on the half-pipe, to the more profound, celebrating a year out of chemo. As a bonus, it works great with all four tendencies. Wonderful. That's so fun. If you want a link to the one sentence journal, I'll post a link to that. I love using all these journals. What about you, Elizabeth? How are you approaching your time these days? I think I've mentioned that I'm doing a one sentence journal every night for write 24 and 24. And what I'm doing is setting a timer every night at 9.15 p.m. Uh, And that helps me uh, get it done. Otherwise, I'll just forget about it. But the timer is super helpful. Yeah, it's, it's interesting how easy it is to forget to do something, even if you've done it every day for months. It just can slip your mind. Absolutely. I find that I do it in mid morning, but I do it for what happened the day before which I was like, is that technically okay? And then I'm like, hey, upholder, that's fine. You can make a rule the way you want. So for me, it's about reflecting on the previous day. So I do it between like 10 and 11. I usually will find time because I'm doing the five senses journal and the one sentence journal. Yeah. But I can do that. And for and then also, you know, what I'm doing for April is I am writing cards and letters. You know, I'm doing that. I teamed up with Paper Source for daily letter writing prompts, which is a thing you could do for the Write 24 and 24 challenge. And it's because April is National Card and Letter Writing Month. So I've been having so much fun with that. So what have you done, Gretch? I have mailed three cards and letters to friends and family. And it is so fun. I love getting to use stationery. And it's fun to just plan a little idea, a little treat to send to somebody. Elizabeth, you and I always talk about wanting to get something in the mail, meaning we just want some like unexpected little booster. So if people are interested in joining in, you can get a prompt every day in your inbox for April, and you can get 10% discount for papersource.com. If you want to stock up on stationery, if you want to check out all the information, go to happiercast.com slash paper source. And Gretch, finally, Chris says, I am over the moon excited about the right 24 and 24 challenge. I've done a pretty good job of getting into this new habit, but I am struggling with a stumbling block. I require feedback on my writing in order to get motivated. Mm. As a journalism major in college, I won many competitions for my writing. I plan on having a career in this field, but dropped out of school to marry the love of my life. I've come to realize that just about all the writing projects I've done in my life have been 
created for other people to see, judge, or enjoy. I am determined to finally use my writing talents to their fullest. I'm writing a lot, but each time I finish a project, I feel like I've cooked a beautiful meal with no one to serve it to. I'm leaning towards starting a blog. What do you think? Absolutely. I think it's great. Start a blog, start a newsletter. I started a blog. I had a blog that I wrote in like six days a week for years and years and years. I still write for my blog. I love it. I think that's a great idea. Yes, absolutely. Do it. Well, and it's interesting because Chris doesn't seem to need accountability. I think some people do a blog because it makes them feel accountable. Even if there's no audience, there's sort of the idea or the promise of an audience. And this isn't about accountability. This is more about just wanting to create for the pleasure of showing what you've created, of sharing and having people engage with it. That's a great reason to do it as well. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Now we have a listener question. And Elizabeth, we're stumped by this question. This is a really hard question. Yes, it is. So we're going to put it out there. Yes. This comes from Julie. She says, having worked as a small animal veterinary surgeon for some 12 years, I've had numerous, too many to be comfortable, experiences being stopped in shops and bars to be quizzed over someone's beloved pet, had social occasions interrupted by clients wanting to discuss the terms of their pet's illness, been informally telephoned and visited at home in the middle of the night by pet parents asking advice, had injured pets carried to my front door by distressed carers, only delaying their important visit to the vet clinic, etc. While I've taken these incidents as part of my vocation, my situation is now more fraught. I am moving in to care for an elderly relative. While understanding of the work I love, she is very much disturbed and frightened by uninvited callers and visitors, particularly as my work sometimes means I am out during the night when these calls can occur. Also, my family caring role will mean my focus outside of the clinic will have a human priority. So much so I do not want my new neighbors knowing what I do. Well, I cannot lie, it is inevitable that all the conversations come around to the question, so what do you do for work? This leaves me browbeaten as to what to say, as I know from previous experiences that any reference to my job with animals will result in my work being the only topic of conversation for the rest of my association, and I cannot control the influx of strangers that arise on account of my job title. I've been trying to deflect the question, give a vague answer about healthcare, change the subject, etc., but all these responses lead to more questions or distrust and an immediate barrier to making new friends. In short, I cannot find a satisfying way forward. I don't believe I will be the only person to feel this discomfort in this kind of scenario. So what can I say when I'm asked the question, what do you do for work? This is a tough one. This is a tough one. Now, the first thing, I think it's really good to think about, well, how am I going to handle this? To think about it in advance instead of just sort of always trying to come up with something on the fly. We talked about this back in episode 246, which is if you're in a tough situation, have your words ready. And that can make it less stressful because you sort of have your two or three sentences that are framing the situation the way you want and, you know, maybe characterize it the way you want to characterize it. So then it's less exhausting. But then that just leads to the question of like, okay, yes, it is needed to have sort of these talking points, but what should those words be? I mean, and it's clear this isn't a theoretical thing. This is something that has come no. up many, many, many times. So this is this is not what if. This is It's going to happen. Yes. And if one person knows, everybody knows. Information will spread like wildfire. You really have to have a uniform answer of what you're going to tell everybody. Well, and the thing is, she doesn't want to lie and she doesn't want to tell the truth. Yes. It's very hard. And understandably both. (laughs) And I was thinking part of this is probably because, you know, doctors have this issue as well. Human doctors. But there are more doctors than there are vets in my experience. So there's more people to absorb the questions. Yes. But if you know a vet, absolutely, I can see how tempting it would be to pepper them with questions constantly. But I think it's a good point and something maybe that all of us should be aware of is that there are people in certain professions where others turn to them for advice in a way that can become like very intrusive and burdensome. For example, even someone like an IT person where you're like, hey, can you come over and check out my Wi-Fi? Or can I just have you talk me through a certain problem? Or like you say, doctors, or maybe even someone like teachers where you're like, okay, I'm having trouble with my child. 
And I think, as she said, with some vocations, you understand that that is that's part of the calling of it because you do have more information. You have this knowledge that is really, really precious to other people. And then, you know, but but then we've all been on the other side, too, where you're thinking, oh, well, this person just has this huge trove of information. It will be no trouble for them if I just ask a few questions like, should I be worried about this? My dog smells like Fritos. Is that bad? You know, and you think, oh, this yeah. is just one little question. But here it sounds like people are showing up and then she's got this elderly relative who she has to be thinking about too. Yes. So I don't know if there's some kind of truthful, but, you know, boring uh, thing you could say <laughs> like, oh, I work in a lab, uh. which is sort of true. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. It's hard. I think we should ask listeners yeah. if anybody else has dealt with this and what they've done. Yeah, because one of the things is that she knows so much more about animals than other people do. You know what I mean? It's just one of these things where the minute people know you know about animals, it's like whatever you do with animals, you're probably an expert compared to other people. Right. Now, you wonder now, could she help the elderly relative get more comfortable with the situation? But it sounds like maybe that's not really possible or she doesn't want to ask that of her relative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And maybe she's also just tired of of living this way. Well, she says this now she has a human priority. out of it. You know? Yeah. 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 Okay, listeners, this is a tough one. Have you managed this yourself? Do you have ideas? It's a hard question. Coming up, I give myself what I'm pretty sure is a repeat demerit. But first, this break. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. It can be easy to ignore our social battery and spread ourselves thin, especially with social gatherings picking up after the winter. Gretchen, you know I love to socialize, but I need to do it in a way that's good for right. me, that doesn't drain my battery, and therapy can really help figure out what works for you, what doesn't work for you, so that you're not just spending out too much of your social energy. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. Charge. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Gretchen Rubin today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Gretchen Rubin. We're so excited to introduce you to Great Jones. Great Jones makes high-quality, thoughtfully designed cookware that's so stunning, you won't want to put it away. They have everything from Dutch ovens to ceramic dishes to non-stick sheet pans. They've got everything you want. I have the Saucy, which is a terrific saucepan. It has curved sides. It has a pouring spout. It has a lid. And it looks so elegant. It's really a pleasure just to look at it on the counter, even before we're using it. Yes, I love all the colors. Yeah. They make stunning gifts that are actually useful. Weddings, housewarming parties, birthdays. It's the perfect gift for the foodie in your life. So upgrade your kitchen and replace those old rusted hand-me-downs with bold, beautiful, long-lasting pieces from Great Jones. Get started today at greatjones.com and get an extra 15% off your first order with promo code HAPPIER. That's greatjones.com, promo code HAPPIER. I don't know about you, but I'm always looking for ways for my son to get involved and give back in our local community. That's why I'm excited to tell you about Student Visionaries of the Year, a campaign by Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, the largest nonprofit organization dedicated to creating a world without blood cancers. Student Visionaries of the Year is a seven-week philanthropic leadership development program for high school students. Participants form strong teams and fundraise in honor of a pediatric blood cancer survivor in their local community. This program is transformative. It not only helps students develop valuable life skills like project management, communication, financial literacy, and entrepreneurship, not to mention it looks great on college applications, but most importantly, is also a chance for them to engage in meaningful work within their community and make a real impact on blood cancer patients and their families. You can learn more about Student Visionaries of the Year or even nominate a student at lls.org students. That's lls.org students. 
Okay, Elizabeth, it's time for demerits and gold stars. And a reminder for everybody, we always give ourselves a demerit. That's how we do it because that's how we make ourselves happier is by giving ourselves a demerit and then learning from the demerits. And then we take turns giving ourselves demerits and giving ourselves or others gold stars. And Elizabeth, this is an even-numbered episode, so it means it's your turn to talk about a demerit, a repeat demerit, apparently. Yes, Scratch. So Jack had a class trip and I did not complete his health forms on time. Mm. And I'm pretty sure I did the same thing last year when he had a class Well, we've trip. all done it. <laughs> and you have to complete the health form. He takes medication, so I have to take the medication to school. And it's just rude because, you know, the school has their date by which they want the forms done and everything handled. And I'm going to have to do it. I cannot get out of this task. It won't go away. It takes the exact same amount yeah. of time whenever I do it, and yet there's something that makes me not do it on time. Then I have to call and say, oh, sorry, I haven't done it. I'll do it tomorrow. Um, and of course, they're nice about it, but it's very annoying for them and for me. Yeah. So I am just announcing this so that hopefully for the next class trip, Gretch, I will get those forms done in a timely manner. Okay. Well, if you mention to me in advance that Jack has a trip coming up, I'm going to yes. turn on my happiness bully side. and Because you're right. It's the same amount of work. It's even more work. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. It's easier if you do yeah. it immediately. It's like buying plane so, tickets. It only gets harder. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and more expensive. Yep. This luckily didn't get more expensive, yeah. but demerit for me. Yeah. All right, Gretch, what is your gold star? I want to give a gold star to my friend Julia. My friend Julia is super artistic and handy. She can make things and do all kinds of things. And my dog Barnaby had a special toy. And like our dog growing up, Elizabeth Paddywhack, did not have a special toy. But Barnaby has mm -mm. a special toy. We call it the Abominable Snowman because it looks sort of like a snowman. And I mean, he'll, if like you've been away, he'll go get it and bring it to you. Like, hey, do you, do you know I have this really great toy? Or like, he'll go get it and then just have it next to him when he's sitting down and he'll just carry it around and play with it in his own way. But he ripped it apart and it was really starting to fall apart. We tried to see if we could go online and buy duplicate and try to trick him into thinking that they were the same one. Elizabeth, our grandmother, tried to pull this on you with your special blankie when you were a child. Yes. You were way too sophisticated to be fooled by the false blankie, but we thought maybe we could pull a fast one on Barnaby, but it's just gone. There are literally none to be found anywhere. This is a one-of-a-kind thing. So my friend Julia, who nicknames herself Dr. Stitchlove, said, hey... I'll fix it. Aww. Bring all the parts and the bits to me. And so I, like, I went around the house and it was like an arm here and some loose stuffing <laughs> in this corner. And she put it together. She even added this special sort of plaid tummy to reinforce it. And Barnaby Aww. is just as happy with it. We didn't that wash it so because cute. part of it is just the familiarity and the smell and the texture. But we're all so, our whole family is so relieved because we were really worried. Like, what's going to happen when this thing just literally disintegrates? Yeah. And you can't explain to a dog. And uh, anyway, it, so every once in a while, I sent her a photo of Barnaby, like, cuddled up next to the abominable snowman because he cannot tell her how happy he is. But we're all very, very happy because he's so happy. That's great. Gold yeah. star. Gold star. So the resource for this week, we so often talk about books and book clubs. And many people have asked for the book club discussion guide for the book Life in Five Senses, my book that uh, is coming out in paperback April 30th. If you want to use it for your book club, you can find it at GretchenRubin.com slash resources. Plus, I am doing this thing that I have not done before. This is going to be really fun. If you are hosting a book club for Life in Five Senses, you can enter your book club for a chance for me to come by and do a virtual drop-in. I haven't done this before, but I think it'll be super fun. I love book clubs so much. I would love to come talk to a book club of full of people I don't know. That would be really fun. All the details are at HappierCast.com slash book club, one word. I mean, speaking of reading, Elizabeth, what are you reading? I am reading Please See Us by Caitlin Mullen. And I am reading Loved and Missed by Susie Boyd. And that's it for this episode of Happier. Remember to try this at home. Focus on the textures around you. Let us know if you tried it and how it worked for you. Thanks to our executive producer, Chuck Reed, and everyone at Odyssey. Get in touch. Gretchen's on Instagram, Threads, Facebook, and TikTok at Gretchen Rubin. And I'm on Instagram and Threads at Liz Craft. And if you like the show and you're doing Right 24 and 24, or maybe you're not even doing Right 24 and 24, use two to four minutes to rate, review, 
subscribe, and share our podcast. All these things really help new people to discover our show. Until next week, I'm Elizabeth Kraft. And I'm Gretchen Rubin. Thanks for joining us Onward and Upward. Elizabeth, it's so fun to see you wearing the Choose the Bigger Life t-shirt. That's so great. Yes. Yes. Oh. One of my few long sleeve t-shirts. It's perfect for a chilly morning. You love a themed t-shirt or mug. I do. I do. Okay. From the Onward Project.